All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Silvilki Show, for making my job just a tiny bit more difficult. Recently, I was asked to give my thoughts on the Silvilki Show's naturalistic hamster terrarium. They decided that they didn't want to hear my thoughts on it, but I'm not gonna give up. <laughs> you can't silence me. So um, I'm gonna be explaining my thoughts on how I feel about their naturalis naturalistic hamster terrarium. So we don't even get six seconds into the video before I spot something incredibly dangerous, and that is bringing their hamster stuff in outside into the forest. Please, please, please don't bring your hamster outside. They do not receive benefit from it. There not only is a chance that they can get lost, which in the video they actually say that the hamster Stefan goes down a hole and they almost don't get him out. What would you do if you didn't get your hamster back because you decided to bring them outside? Two, there are lots of predators outside. You got hawks, dogs, cats, foxes, snakes, and other reptiles that are looking for a quick snack. And especially if you are not like directly sitting and holding your hamster, you're filming them from a good few feet, that's a big chance that your hamster is just gonna be a snack. And the third thing is parasites and bacteria. These hamsters are domesticated and they are not going to survive against bacteria and parasites. I definitely do understand their thought process and in theory making a naturalistic hamster enclosure is a pretty good idea, but I don't think they are executing it right or thinking it all completely through. An interesting choice I thought they made was they decided to custom make their own aquarium and they went with a beveled aquarium rather than just getting a traditional square aquarium. This is interesting because you are then limiting yourself to how much bedding depth you're able to put because that front beveled bit is only 6.6 .6 inches tall and that's not very tall to put a lot of substrate and still have the height for the accessories inside of the enclosure. And then they also made the enclosure significantly small with it only being 19.6 inches long by 11.8 inches wide, which gives you a total of 231 square inches of floor space. This is just too small for a hamster. Next, they decide to go outside and collect natural materials to put into the terrarium, something that I don't necessarily agree with, especially since they do not talk about sanitization and they do not talk about identifying the plants and branches that they are going to be using in the terrarium. So we don't know whether or not they are toxic to a hamster or not. They also show Stefan's old cage compared to the new cage and try to spin it as like it's this really huge upgrade when it's like this much larger. <laughs> Then we finally get to them setting up their terrarium. The first thing that they do is they put a layer of Lekka balls. This is because they say they're going to have to water the soil to keep it moist. And this is where I have my issues. So soil number one as an entire substrate is going to be extremely hard to keep spot cleaning. And this enclosure is not a bioactive enclosure. I actually don't think bioactive enclosures necessarily really work for hamsters because of how much waste a hamster produces. You're going to have to have an amazing cleanup crew. For reptiles, the cleanup crew even then still isn't always enough and you still are going to have to spot clean in a bioactive reptile enclosure. So for a hamster who is making 10 times more waste, you're going to have to have so many insects to be able to do an actual cleanup job and you're still going to have to probably spot clean which finding poop in dirt is like super hard and trying to find pee in dirt that is 
most likely already moist, good luck. Now in the wild, this really isn't an issue for a hamster because so what? They fill up their bathroom area, you just move away. But you can't do that in captivity when you're stuck with only 231 square inches of floor space. You can't just move away from it because eventually the entire thing is going to be a bathroom. My other issue is because they have to keep the soil moist, this comes with a lot of other issues. Number one, the fact that they did put the LECA so that it's going to, if any excess water, it can collect at the bottom, but they don't put anything to separate the LECA from the dirt. So Stefan is actually going to be able to burrow all the way down to the LECA layer. And in my head, I'm like, well, that means Stefan could just go burrow all the way down and be sitting in just water and that's really not great. The other thing is because the soil has to stay moist. The reason for this is because if it doesn't stay moist, it is going to collapse when the hamster tunnels, and that can be really, really dangerous, obviously, so they do have to keep it considerably um, moist. And uh, with moisture comes a really, really, really great breeding ground for bacterias, mold, funguses, and things like ringworm. And that's why I personally don't necessarily agree with soil as the entire main substrate. I think using soil in a small dig box is a much better option and much more manageable. So as for my final thoughts, I really don't necessarily agree with these naturalistic hamster terrariums. I do think the creators could have done a little bit better job at researching what well, Stefan is a hybrid dwarf hamster, but what climates a winter white and Campbell's dwarf hamster come from, what their environments look like, because I can just look out at my Canadian forest and think, oh, that's a good place for a hamster to live. But it's not because a hamster's climate is not going to look anything like a Canadian forest. It's actually going to look pretty different. Dwarf hamsters live in environments that are like dry steppes, grain fields, semi-deserts and sandy soil areas, places like Kazakhstan, Mongolia, northern China, North Korea, places like that. So if you researched into the types of substrates that are in these environments and climates and the plants that naturally would grow there, I think that would be a little bit better and closer to how they would actually live. They kind of actually missed out on doing a lot of enrichment type of things, like they just give Stefan a dish of food when they could have been scatter feeding or including uh, dried sprays so that he would actually have to forage. They could have included sanitized leaves, flowers, and herbs, um, as well as cork logs and grapevine wood on the top surface. The top surface of the enclosure is honestly quite boring. It just has a stick, a house, and some moss that's quite boring in my opinion for a hamster. It's the only enrichment they necessarily have there is the burrowing aspect, which they don't have too much of it because it's not super deep. So those are my thoughts. I'm interested in hearing yours, so leave them down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!